Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba, Vintage Scuba. We're going to talk about some old stuff again today, and that is a shipwreck. A shipwreck right up here in one of the lakes in Ontario. It's a very, very popular shipwreck. It's a wonderful shipwreck, actually. I've made many, many dives on it, probably 50 different dive, 50 dives on this shipwreck. I'll tell you a couple of short stories, and then we're going to talk about a very special dive. The shipwreck is called the Weomi, and this was a, a typical uh, Muskoka Lakes steamship. It is, it is a steamship, and a big boiler, and the big pistons, and, the, and, and, and a prop on the back, and everything else. Made of wood, of course, and there were a lot of them in those days. This is the late 1800s, probably, I forget the exact dates on that uh, shipwreck. Uh, maybe, Kev, you can put that on there for the folks. Uh, but I want to guess it was from the late 1800s, and I'm going to guess again that it probably sank in the early 1900s, because that was the time frame. Between 1850 and 1925, maybe, steamships ruled. Know, and then gasoline, and then diesel, and so on. But anyway, uh, the Wyoming was a uh, uh, was a beautiful ship. Uh, it was used for many, many purposes: cargo, lumber, coal, all kinds of stuff. And it was also a passenger ship. Uh, there were, were undoubtedly some accidents. Yeah? Some of the ships caught fire. Usually, well, they were sitting at a dock. Uh, some of the ships uh, ran aground. Some of the ships ran into each other, <laughs> didn't have radar, compasses were so, so reliable, it was foggy, horns, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the Wyoming was an interesting shipwreck, and a little bit unique in that it did not hit anything, it sank. Right out in the middle, yeah, water is 60, 70 feet deep, and the Wyoming uh, just sank to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Why did it sink to the bottom? Well, the Muskoka Lakes are not great big lakes, but they do have a fair expanse, uh, they're fairly long, and um, and sometimes a wind would come whistling down in the right direction. It would come whistling down the Muskoka Lakes, and it was terrible wind, particularly in the fall. And uh, it was coming down, and it came around an island, and the island had been protecting it from the wind. And it came around an island, and as it came around the island, all of a sudden this tremendous wind came down, and uh, the ship uh, uh, it pushed the ship. It was a tall ship. As many of those Muskoka Lake steamers were very, very tall. Sometimes you had two or three or four decks, plus the smokestack and everything else. Very, very tall ship. So the wind caught the ship and tipped it over. And unfortunately, on the side that was uh, on the uh, uh, lee side, uh, the, uh, the hatches were open or the holes were open. They had big openings, and they put wooden in it, battens, big wooden battens to seal them tight. They weren't there. So water came pouring in and down the sink. And it was a nice ship. Remember, it was a passenger ship. So it had some nice companion ways. It had some nice, uh, nice deck chairs, nice deck, nice fan tail, and so on. Had a washroom, had a kitchen, a nice, uh, a nice um, um, pilot house, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a very, very good ship. The diving conditions are interesting as well. The water's clear, very, very clear water. It's also fairly cold. Now, in the summertime, say from July on, the surface of the surface, the top 10, 15, 20 feet sometimes is pretty good. It might be 65 or 70, almost swimming temperature. But the minute you get below the thermal climb, below 30 or 40 feet, then, uh, then the water drops to a pretty consistent 40 degrees. 40 degrees, yeah, that's reg freezing temperature. If you've been watching my tab tech tips, <laughs> my tech tips, you know that uh, 40 degrees is when your reg can freeze up. Now, it's interesting because people say, oh, hey, the water's clear. The water is clear. But it has has a, a tea like like tea drinking drinking tea. It has a tea like appearance. If you take a nice clean white porcelain cup and scoop up some water from Lake Muskoka, it's clear, but a very slight tea look to it. Yeah, and of course that as you get deeper and deeper and deeper, less and less lake gets through. So at 35, 40, 45 feet where the Wyoming, the top of the Wyoming lies. Not very much sunlight gets through. It'd be like walking into a, a, a dark room at, at uh, first thing in the morning and you can't quite see very well. You can see the wreck, but not very well. So you pretty much need to have a light with you all the time to dive you. Anyway, it's a fantastic wreck. 1994. That was the 60th anniversary, I'm pretty sure. Yes, 60th anniversary, which you mean it sank in 1934. Gosh, I'm pretty good for an old guy, huh? Uh, 60th anniversary of the sinking of the Wyoming, and we at uh, Scuba 2000, Diane and myself, the owners of Scuba 2000, a very big shop, um, wanted to do something special. And we were thinking, what can we do, what can we do? So what we did is organized a commemorative dive on the SS steamship Wyoming, in Lake Muskoka. Yeah. And uh, we publicized the heck out of it, and we had all kinds of special stuff for the divers on it. And what we did to make it really special is we actually commissioned the Seguin 
S-E-G-W-U-N, Seguin. I think I spelled that right. The Seguin is a steamship. That's a Muskoka steamship from the same time period as the Wyoming, from the early 1900s. So wonderful. It's an old, it was a mail ship, very big, bigger than the Wyoming, I'm quite sure. But a fully operating original steamship, Muskoka steamship, wonderful to ride on. And you guys that like machinery, or girls that like to see old machinery, the steam boilers down there, the pistons and the valves, oh, it's a fantastic ship to take a tour on. What we did, we actually commissioned, uh, rented, if you like, the Seguin to take us out for our commemorative dive on the Wyoming. Oh, it was a fantastic idea. Oh, you went crazy. We had uh, the, the, uh, the big newspaper in Toronto was up. They did a half-page article about it. And, and to make it really interesting for the divers, uh, something memorable, we produced several things. First of all, I got one of my, uh, one of my uh, instructors, uh, a wonderful chap by the name of Leo Herskowitz. I'm going to mention his name. I don't think there's any harm in that uh, because, unfortunately, Leo's not with us anymore. But Leo Herskowitz, uh, I commissioned him to dig up some information, and uh, he was he was uh, g good with language, and I had him write this book. So we had we actually produced this book, the two of us, thirty a forty page booklet about the Wyoming. Let me see what it says here. The 60th anniversary SS Wyoming commemorative dive book, October the 8th, 1994. And on the front, I had these these uh, little paintings. I'm, not, I'm going to hold this here, Kev, so you can get closer. I had these little paintings made. There's two paintings on here. Up here is the Seguin. This is what the Seguin looks like. And now at the bottom is what the Wyoming looked like. There's only one that I know of remaining photograph of the Wyoming when it was still above water. And that's what it looked like. And so we did that. We had that artwork on there. And it's a beautiful book. It talks about the history of the Wyoming and a bit about the Seguin. And it talks about diving on the, because it was really for divers, diving on the Wyoming, what it's like, all that kind of stuff. And it's a wonderful little booklet that we had made. Now, every one of the divers that drove on the Wyoming on that commemorative dive got one of these booklets. We sold tickets. Here's the ticket. Hey, yeah. So if you were on that commemorative trip many years ago, and a lot of you, I think, are watching right now, may remember this dive because we had 100 divers on this trip. So there's the ticket, uh, the uh, 60th anniversary commemorative dive on the Wyoming. And you got a booklet like this now. It was uh, interesting even more so because we also produced a special uh, page for your logbook, which you could put into your logbook if you had uh, the older style three ring uh, logbook. And the same, same thing, you could sign all, uh, write up your dive on the Wyoming, the segments in there. And down at the bottom, I actually had the signature of the captain and of myself, the organizer of Scuba 2000 of, of the dive. So for the ship's captain, I signed this uh, uh, for your logbook. These were kind of nice. And then we also had a wall certificate. You have to have a wall certificate. Everything, you get a wall certificate. Certificate of participation. This is to certify that this particular diver took part in the 60th anniversary. And this is the same type of setup with the Seguin and the Wyoming on there, signed by um, different people. And your name would be printed in there, and calligraphy was very, very nice. So everybody got one of these. Now, they also got a couple other things, and they got their name on the newspaper. <laughs> and we made a video. And we also had a beautiful, beautiful sweatshirt, a very, very heavy uh, a gray, silver, if you like, sweatshirt with uh, a, a picture of the Wyoming on one side and the Seguin on the other side. And on the sweatshirt, we had the same thing, a large one, and the porthole was brass colored, gold colored, brass colored, and they were really, really sharp and really good, good quality uh, sweatshirts. Uh, we also, interestingly enough, at Scuba 2000, I uh, commissioned an artist to make a special painting. It's not a drawing or a picture, uh, a painting of the two ships, a painting of the Seguin, and then a painting of the Wyoming. Now, the painting of the Seguin wasn't too hard. He actually went up to Gravenhurst and sat there and saw the Seguin and painted it. The painting of the Wyoming was a different story because all he had was this little line, black and white diagram, so he started it. And I said, no, 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 I'll do this. And it took us quite a while, but he finally had a fairly good representative uh, uh, picture painting painting of the Wyoming, all in full color. And this was, this was a big painting. It's quite large. Even more interesting was that if you were one of the hundred, I made quite a few of these. I probably printed 500. We only had 100 divers on the boat. And if you were one of the 100 divers on the boat, then you got all of this stuff, the sweatshirt, the whole thing. <clears throat> now, if you were one of the first, I think it was 25 divers on the boat, then you got a numbered one. So it was numbered. I'll see on the inside here, this is number 
This is number three of 25 on the inside here. And, and the ticket says number three. And the certificate is not the right certificate. They were all, so this was the set of this memorabilia from that commemorative dive on the way home, all for number three. And, uh, and, and if you were the first 10, all this was done in gold leaf. Is yours gold leaf, Kevin? No. Uh, no, 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 okay. All this was all done in gold leaf. Not real gold, but it looks really, really sharp. And I know a lot of the divers out there today still have their 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 stuff from the dive. Remember that. I want to tell you a couple of interesting things about the dive. First of all, the Segwin, being a steamship, can't really stop. You can't shut the the, the engine down, right? So, uh, and he didn't want to stop out there. There's no way to anchor out there, and we didn't want an anchor line. So, the Segwin, the ship that we were diving from, actually made a fairly large circle around the way on me. <laughs> That's right. And so every time they came around. Ten divers would be all set, and it's a stop for a moment, didn't stop, but it shut off the engine. Ten divers would jump in and down they'd go. And the divers were under uh, fairly strict orders that, you know, this is not an exploratory dive. They're going down on the commemorative dive to say you're on the way home on the sixth anniversary. Go down, take a quick look around, touch the ship, so you can say you were there you, as you were on the dive and come back up. So this is like a 20-minute dive. Maximum. So 10 people in, 20 minute dive, 10, 20 minutes. And we had all 100 divers went down and had a really interesting time. And we had a nice meal on the uh, S egg one, and I forget what it was wine and a nice meal. And it was such a great day. Back to the wreck. It's a wonderful wreck. If you get a chance, if you're up in, uh, in central Ontario scuba diving, go to the scuba shack, check on the Wyoming, Google Wyoming shipwreck. It's on Lake Muskoka in Ontario, and I see some information. There's lots and lots of pictures now. There weren't very many pictures in 94, but there's lots of pictures now, and Kevin's going to put some more on there. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you, the special event that we organized a number of years ago. I'm just one of the fantastic, the many, many shipwrecks that you can dive here in Ontario. I hope you kind of enjoyed that and learned something about it. And you guys that were lucky enough to be on that dive, if you're watching this video, I hope I brought a smile to your face. Okay, we'll talk to you again real soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Bye-bye.